Hello, everyone. Welcome to News Now, the Belmont Journal's daily update on what's going on in the community of Belmont. I'm your host, Roger Colton. I have with me today Dustin O'Brien, who is the Director of Food Service for the Belmont Public Schools. Dustin, thanks for joining us. You are not only serving kids in school, but you're delivering uh, food. You're having people pick up uh, uh, meals. Can you tell us how many meals uh, are involved? Sure. Uh, first off, Roger, thanks for having me on. So uh, since the shutdown in March of 2020, uh, we have served a total of over 250,000 meals. I don't have the exact number on me, um, but that has evolved over the months. So what started was when we initially had shut down, uh, we weren't sure what the next step was. So we decided to go to a meal pickup model where families could come by the school once a week, um, get meals for the entire week. We would offer seven breakfast and seven lunch items per student. Um, that evolved over the next few weeks where we would make um, roughly 100 to 150 home deliveries. That continued through the summer where we had the once a week meal pickup and the the once a week meal drops offs. When fall came around, we didn't see an end of uh, an in-person, uh, we didn't see a, an in-person model sustaining for the full school year. And because USDA had offered meal free of charge to any community, we decided to see how many families we could actually deliver to. Um, so we put out a survey and in the beginning of September, uh, we got a number, we got about 600 to 700 responses, or, or maybe not six to 700 responses, but that equated to about 600 to 700 students uh, where we actually had to put a cutoff in because uh, we, didn't, we didn't necessarily have the bandwidth to do much more than that. Um, so what happened when we, we got those responses, we uh, found a software called Rutific. It was actually found by Gail Milani, the Assistant Food Service Director. Um, she found software, which I, I would, assume is used by a lot of uh, delivery services where basically we imported all of the addresses into Rutific and set up five routes um, and it gave us the most efficient routing. So it'd be about 100 to 150 uh, stops per day. That has, that has come down a little bit, um, but that is something we have continued to this day. So we're delivering five days a week uh, to both the Belmont and a fair amount of families in Boston. So that's uh, the process we're in. If school is open, we are open for meal pickup. We are open uh, for delivery service. Days we will close as if it's for a holiday or for a unplanned snow day. Now you've been with the Belmont Public Schools for eight years, I, I believe. Uh, when, when did you think that the, the Belmont Public Schools Food Service uh, Department could get in the business of delivering and having food pickup? Well, if you asked me this question this time last year, that was not on my radar at all. Um, we, have a, we have a really strong team and some big thinkers in our kitchens. And I remember um, the proposal to expand home delivery service. And I go, okay, let's, let's see if we can do it. Um, so we rented a van. We've never had a delivery van before. We have two sisters that are based out of the uh, Chenery kitchen. It's the head cook and the assistant head cook, Melissa Moran and Tracy Romano. Uh, Melissa and Tracy handle our home deliveries and they have it kind of down to a science now where I, my involvement is, is definitely come down <laughs> over, the, over the past few months. But no, to, to answer your question, I never thought we were going to go to go to this model ever. I, I assume that there have been fits and starts or things that you've tried that you've abandoned because you wouldn't know what to do from the very beginning, having never done it before. Can you tell us some of the challenges and some of the victories? The, the challenges that... I remember was when we in initially offered it to all families in Belmont and 
the next day, um, we announced that we were gonna offer it to all families for meal pickup. That night, a flurry of emails came in and I was basically preparing our staff for, I don't think we're ready for tomorrow. Um, so that was the big challenge. And to go a little bit further into that day, if, you're, if anyone here is familiar with the setup of the high school all the way to the main road of Concord Ave, we had a line backed up to Concord Ave to where the local police were, got involved going, what is going on here? Um, so we had to modify that. I had some conversations with teachers who, were, who ended up being a little bit late that day. Um, so we had to modify that schedule. So we went from a challenge of trying to have everybody come on one day to how can we uh, make this more efficient? So we offered the service Monday through Friday and I worked with a local community member or a few local community members of, you know, can I get some parent feedback on this? So we worked with Belmont Helps and that's spearheaded by Amy Kirsch and uh, Shauna Wang. And they helped figure out a, can we do some sort of modified schedule where Monday will be uh, the old, the oldest sim, or the oldest child's last name starts with of course A through F will come will come this day and then that kind of cascaded down the line. Um, it wasn't set in stone; you didn't have to come that day, but it was a way for us to be able to tier uh, throughout the week and actually have the bandwidth to to accommodate those pickups. Now, what, one thing. I think people will be interested in is that we talk about Belmont students or serving the Belmont public school community, but there are some Boston students uh, in the Belmont public schools and you serve those students. Sure. So we offer the, the meal delivery service to, to anyone who's opted in um, at the beginning of this, I, I was a Dorchester resident up until recently, so it was actually pretty easy for, for us to get those routes out because I would just handle them on the, on the tail, end of that, tail end of that delivery day. Um, so it's open to anybody, anybody who uh, has either a transportation issue or has to watch their kids at home. Um, I've always said, you know, feel free to email me. We have a set, we have set drivers now that go, go out to Boston and Belmont every single Wednesday. Um, so I, I just continue to say, if you're in need and you're having trouble getting uh, groceries at home, feel free to reach out to us. We're happy to accommodate it. And I think we've, I don't want to say never say never, but I, I think we are at the point where we can accommodate a lot more needs than we initially could. You talk about uh, delivering, uh, there must be a preparation behind it. You're the one who gets to do the interviews, but you have a team behind you. Can you talk about the team? Sure, so this wouldn't be possible without the prep team, the donors, the volunteers. The, the biggest sigh of relief was when we received all that news in March, we have a team, uh, our, our kitchen staff. I had a number of staff going, Dustin, whatever you need, we're gonna be here and we're gonna make this work. Um, so that was a huge relief. Uh, and, it, and it really shows to the character of those individuals to work in a very uncertain time. And, um, you know, it, it, it eased my, it eased my feelings a bit too, because I didn't want to ask that question. Um, I didn't necessarily want to ask that question because I wasn't sure of what, what the future looks like. We had a group um, who was working closely. I think we started at the beginning with, there was two of us uh, on the admin side and then four, four on the prep team side. So there were six of us in the building and then the mask made came in and we adapted to that. Um, as you remember, at the beginning of the pandemic, you thought it was just you had to be spaced out and then it turned into everyone have, having to wear a mask. So that was, that was obviously an adjustment. So the prep team is, deserves the entire, all, basically all the praise. Without them, we wouldn't have any meals going out. Um, 
From there, we have to look at the volunteers that were coming through. We had a number of faculty all spring, all summer, uh, coming by on Wednesdays to make deliveries. So those were, those were all faculty-based volunteers. Uh, I work closely with, all, with a lot of them, and it was great to see basically every week the same people were coming through um, to, to come help us out and get those routes out. And then there's donors. I brought this up at the school committee the other night. Our first donor was a, was a Belmont junior at the time um, who reached out to me to deliver or donate surgical masks. She donated 200 surgical masks when you really couldn't get them anywhere um, to our team. So we've had donations in the, in the form of gift cards. We've had uh, donations in the form of grocery cards. Uh, from a number of, from a number of different sources, and then we've also had a, a fair amount of parent volunteers come forward. And this will uh, last through the end of this year, uh, through the end of this school year. So right now, USDA is allowing this the service of free meals to any community a part of the National School Breakfast or Lunch Program through June thirtieth, twenty twenty one. There has been discussion or no decision on if this will get extended into the following school years. So right now we're, we're trying to get through the rest of this, this school year and we'll make decisions that are best uh, for the community come, come this summer. That's great. Thanks for joining us, Dustin. Thanks for having me. We've been speaking with Dustin O'Brien, the food service director for the Belmont Public Schools. You've been watching News Now, the Belmont Journal's daily update on what's going on in the community of Belmont. Thanks for watching. I'm your host, Roger Colton. I'll talk with you again next time.